Hi, this is Chris with Jai Crispy Consulting, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Mercurial for your versioning control. Now I'll be using the Tortoise HG client. That's a graphical tool that sits on top of Mercurial and it provides a nice interface that you can use to work with it. Mercurial itself works through a command line, which is very helpful for your build process, but not so great for a video and for learning about it. To install Tortoise HG, you can go to the Bitbucket website and find the installer there. That installer does include the Mercurial uh, application, so you don't have to install that separately. Just the one download will give you everything you need. I've already installed that on my system, so I can close down my browser and we can get started. Now I've created an empty folder for the demo and within this folder I'll start off by creating one more folder and I'll call this share. And this is going to represent a network share, something that all of my users would have access to. Next I'm going to create an additional folder and this will be for a user and I'm going to call this Bob and this would represent Bob's uh, working directory, say his My Documents, for example. Now I want one more user, so I'm going to do the same thing, create a new folder, and this time I'll call it Jane. So now I have Bob as a user, Jane as a user, and a network share folder. So to get started with a repository, I'm going to go into the share, and I'm going to create a new folder, and this would be a project folder. I will just call it a Demo Project and then I'll go inside the demo project I'm gonna create one more folder and this will be the stable build of my project so now I want to create this stable build as an actual repository I'll right click go to tortoise HG and then you'll see a, men a menu that comes up I'll choose create repository here and you get a dialog I'm gonna leave all the default options and I'll click create and that's it, it's generated a repository and you can see that from the little green check arrow. So now that I have my repository, I want my users to be able to access it and start building on this project. So I'm gonna go into my Bob directory and I'm just gonna make that same directory structure, demo project, and then stable. And now I'm gonna right click I'm going to go to Tortoise HG, but instead of saying create repository here, there's already a repository that I want to use that's up on that network share or the simulated network share. So I'm going to choose clone to get my own copy of that repository. The clone dialog asks me for the source path and the destination path. Now the source, source path is where is the existing repository that you want to work off of and the destination is where it's going. So in this case my destination is correct but my source needs to change so I'll browse into my share and I'll choose that stable build there and then I'll select clone. And now I have my own copy or rather Bob has his own copy of that project. Now if you look at the repository and click into that stable build you see that all that's in there is the .hg folder that's the repository information so normally you don't do anything with that .hg folder uh, there's only one of them it's not like subversion where it creates a, a folder for every level of your document there's just the one at the top level so we can just leave that alone and we'll go back up and now we're gonna make a copy of the project for Jane uh, I wanna show you here that uh, we don't have to use this same uh, folder hierarchy that I've been doing so for Jane, I'm just going to say demo project stable. And then I'll clone that from that same network share. So rather than having the two layers, Jane just has the one. So now that we've got the repository set up for our different users, we need to actually create some sort of a project. But before I do that, I want to do just a little bit of housekeeping to make it look a little bit nicer when later in the video when we look at how the repository is is getting set up and how things are being checked in I want to give each of these users their own commit name so I'm just gonna go into the settings and I'll give a username of Bob for his repository and then I'll do the same thing for Jane typically you wouldn't need to do this you would just set it once on your system in the global settings 
uh, but just for this example, uh, that's a good thing to have so we can see who's checking in what later. So now that that housekeeping is done, let me go ahead and create a project. So I'll launch Visual Studio. I'm going to just create a basic.NET web application. And I'm going to put this into Bob's directory. So the stable build for Bob, and then we'll let Visual Studio create a solution. And that's great. We can see what this looks like. Let me just build this. And there you go, a very basic application, but we didn't have to write any code, so good enough for our purposes. We can close that down. And now that Bob has created this project, he's done. So we can close Visual Studio and just look in Bob's directory and we can see there's our solution that we created in Visual Studio within Bob's stable folder. Now Bob is going to want to keep track of this change so we'll right click and say HG commit. This will allow us to commit this change to our local repository. The first thing we'll want to do is create a message that will help us in the future remember what this actual commit was for. And down below we can see a list of all of the files that Visual Studio created for us. Now if you look through this list you'll notice that there's certain files that we don't really need to be under version control. For example, this .user file, each user who works on this project will have their own copy of this file and it can be auto-generated so there's really no reason that we need to have it under version control. So I'm going to right click and I'll say ignore and this brings up our ignore dialog box and we have two text boxes up at the top. The first one will be an exact match to whatever file you, you choose, uh, the complete path. And then we can also have the option of putting in a regular expression. And this will allow us to select multiple files. So I'll add one that will hide all the user files. And if you notice, in that unknown files section on the right and in the main file window, anything that I ignore will disappear from the list. So we don't have to worry about accidentally checking it in the future. Um, so I'm not going to go through any detail on what I'm adding here. It'll be specific to whatever sort of programming language or what project you're working on. Um, so I'll add the things that I know I don't need to keep track of and I can close out of that. So now the files that remain I want to add to my version control. So I'm going to check at the top. It'll select all of them and then say commit. It's going to ask if I want to commit all those files. I do. So I'll say yes. Now at this point the commit is only for Bob's repository. So if we look at Jane, there's nothing here. She doesn't have any of those files. They haven't been automatically brought over. So if Bob wants to share these changes, he needs to put them up to that share where Jane has access to. So I'll go to the Bob's stable directory and I'll right click and I'm going to bring up the HG repository explorer. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I want to push my outgoing change set. And this will push it up to that repository. It knows where it was taken from. But if we look, Jane still doesn't have the files. So what's going on here is that Jane needs to update her version of the repository. So under Jane's directory, we'll go into her repository explorer and we'll pull the incoming changes. Now again, it knows that Jane is cloning from the shared stable repository. And it's important to notice that over here on the right, there's a section that says after pull and I have update selected. Uh, most of the time, this is the setting that you will probably want. Uh, if you don't have that, then the local files won't be generated. Um, the repository will be updated, but your local file system won't. So now if I look Yes, Jane has all the files and we can open up her version of the solution. And maybe Jane wants to change some of the styles. So we will open up the style sheet. And I'll launch Firefox just so it's easier to see what styles we want to change. So uh, she wants to change some of these colors. Uh, she doesn't like this header color. So we're going to see what that is and we'll go in and locate this CSS and we'll make this a gray color. 
And then we also want to change some of these uh, tab backgrounds. So we'll just go with a whole gray scheme here. So uh, different shades of gray. I'll just update some of these styles. And uh, when it's hovered, a little bit lighter shade. So refresh and we can see our changes. So that's great. Jane's happy now. So she is done, she'll close out of the solution, and now she wants to check in her changes again to her local repository. So hg commit again, and we'll make the message of the updating of the styles, and we'll say commit. Now to make things a little bit more interesting, let's assume that while Jane was making these changes for the styling, that Bob was making his own change. So we'll go over to Bob's directory, and we'll open up the solution for him, and now Bob's going to make some content changes. So we'll just change the text here to say, Welcome to Mercurial Tortoise HG. And preview those changes. And you'll see we have the old style. We haven't picked up Jane's changes yet, but we have our new content. So that looks like what Bob wants. We'll close that. And this is the only change that Bob was going to make. So he can close down Visual Studio. And now we're ready to check in the changes. So we'll do the same thing again. Under Bob's director, we'll do the commit. And we'll go ahead and we'll push Bob's changes up to the share. And now that we've done that, we'll close that down. Now let's go over and we'll see what happened when Jane tries to check in her changes. So we'll say repository explorer. And if she tries to push her changes up to the share, we get this error message. The error itself is a little bit cryptic, but basically it means that you're not in sync. So before she can push, Jane needs to pull in Bob's change set. So again, we'll leave the after pull update. And after we do the pull, we see that there's a, a branch. There's these two separate lines of development. So what we want to do is we'll right click and we'll say merge. And this is going to bring our two change sets together. And it's pretty smart at merging. So rarely do you have conflicts, but in a future video, I'll show you how to handle that. So now we can check in, uh, commit our change. And now Jane is able to push up to the share. So finally, we'll go back over to Bob, open up his repository explorer, and we'll pull down the changes, and we see the style change and the merge that Jane did. So now we're all up to date, and we can go back to the top level. Now one thing to keep in mind is we haven't done any work actually within the share. All we did was generate the repository initially empty. So if we drill down into the stable release of the share, you see that all we have are the mercurial files. We don't have the actual project files, and that's because we never did any sort of an update on this particular folder. How when we did the pull, I told you about that option, the, uh, the after pull update. So we can get the same thing. We can generate those files by just choosing update and then we see within the share that we have all the project files so that's a good thing to know uh, just in case you ever pull and you don't have that uh, option checked uh, you can just right click and do the update option and then you'll be all set you'll have all the files that you need so that'll be all for this video thank you for watching